Hey, welcome folks, it's me, OG Duffy, back with another Versus Comparison video. This week, we're taking a look at Continental Circus, the historic arcade game. Now, what makes this game so historic and important in video game history? Tell us now. Upon researching this video, I've read on several very um, credible websites that this was the first ever 3D game when it was released on the arcade. Apparently, the original arcade release of this, you could have goggles uh, or specs of some description you put on that would make it truly 3D, and apparently it was quite impressive. Now, I never ever saw that version. I saw the stand-up cab and stuff like that, but I've never saw the 3D cab. Now, did you guys, any of you out there, ever play the original 3D version? If so, please do tell me in the comments, was it any good? How groundbreaking was it for the day? Because it sounds incredible, you know, and it's one that passed me by. I never knew that fact. So please do let me know. Now before we get into Continental Circus, uh, we're obviously going to look at the arcade version first, as always, because we need to see what we're comparing it to. We need to see when we're looking at the home versions, how good they were compared to the arcade original, yeah? Um, so, this week, we're going to be looking at 16-bit home computer systems, namely the Commodore Amiga and, of course, the Atari ST. And then we will be looking at the 8-bit home computer systems. But I'm adding a new system this week, one I've not featured before, because as you know, I'm going to try and incorporate a few more systems as we do these now. And they are the MSX, its first appearance, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, the Amstrad CPC, and the Commodore 64, of course. Them four will go head to head to see who takes the best version. Now, before we look at the arcade version, just a quick thing. This was called Continental Circus. And apparently, when researching, the reason for that is it got lost in, lost in translation from Japanese over to the Western market. It was meant to be um, Continental Circuit, but it got lost in translation, people. Absolutely not. It got lost in translation. So anyway, released by Taisho in 1987 in the arcades. Let's go take a look at the arcade version of Continental Circus and stick around, folks, because as always, we're going to look at all the systems and then I will give you my comparison, my verdict, and who wins in the battles between the 16-bit systems and the 8-bit systems. Continental Circus, here we go. As always, looking at the arcade version first. Uh, released in 87 by Taisho. As I've already told you guys, this is an historic title. Apparently, it is the world's first 3D video game, alright? Uh, it used a similar setting, apparently, to the 3D glasses that the Master System used. Um, and apparently, it was really, really impressive from the time, from what I've read. I have not played this in 3D. I've never seen it in 3D. If any of you guys have, as I've already said, please do let me know in the comments, you know, uh, what you guys know about this. Because let's be honest, there's not a lot you people don't know when it comes to classic retro gaming. Uh, now, this was your typical style of racing game. Um, but instead of reaching the checkpoint with the inner set time, it was still very similar. You still had to reach that criteria, but you had to overtake an amount of cars, as you can see there in qualify. It says qualify top right, 80, and your rank. So you had to overtake uh, 20 cars. You went from 100 to 20. Um, it was very good. Um, graphically, sound-wise, everything about this game was very impressive. Um, overall, a great game. Uh, lots of different levels. Um, and more damage your car took as well. You would be a pop uh, pit stop. You can take pit stops uh, to repair the vehicle and everything else. And the car uh, would explode and fly out of the screen, so to speak. As you can see, sort of tyres flying across the screen and things. So the 3D effect would have been particularly impressive for that. Next up, let's go take a look at this version here. This here is the Atari ST version first. Didn't look too bad. Um, obviously not a direct pump of the... Uh, the arcade that would be asking far too much of this system um, but it was, it was a good game to play it was was fun and enjoyable which is way what video games should be um, you wouldn't be unhappy with this it looked good it looked resembled the arcade game so all in all quite good um, this version um, compared to the Amiga obviously we're about to look at the Amiga now the Amiga version of course is going to look similar 
as we always see in these versus videos um, the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga uh, usually do um, resemble pretty much each other and it's always a very close call between these two systems so let's go take a look at the Amiga version next Commodore Amiga version of Continental Circus um, as you can see as I've already pointed out very similar looking to the Atari ST um, so let's be honest there was never really a lot between both of these systems um, I found with this the frame rate to me um, didn't look as sharp as the Atari ST might have just been me but it just didn't look as good um, I mean, graphically, looked very similar, but I think the uh, the frames per second, I think, might have been higher on the ST. I'm sure someone out there will know. Um, it, it's an enjoyable game again. Uh, I found this version easier than the ST. Don't know why. Just seemed to play a lot easier. Um, so the ST was slightly harder. Um, did you guys notice that? Did you own this on either of the 16-bit systems of the day? Let me have your memories, please. Now a first for the OG Duffy channel, we're looking at the MSX machine. Yes, this is truly this slow. Yes, there was no sound. It was pretty horrifying. As you'll see in a moment, it doesn't look dissimilar to the Spectrum version, but it was so, so slow. Honestly, this isn't on slowdown or anything. I haven't tampered with the video. Um, there was a turbo mode for this, which made the game a lot faster. Um, but why they just didn't package it as the turbo mode? Why they even released it like this, as this slow, is, is just beyond me. So unfortunately, MSX, not the greatest showing for you on your first debut on the channel. But hey, let's see how it compares to the other 16-bit systems. It might be all right. We'll find out. And now the Commodore 64. First things first is the sound. Um, had the engine noise during the game. I did have some music which was um, during sort of cutscenes and you know intro screens and that sort of stuff, but no in-game music. Um, it was an enjoyable game to play. Obviously made use of a bit of colour because it's the Commodore 64 after all so it didn't have to rely on just your monochrome graphics like the MSX did uh, and uh, overall as I say it was a very playable game nice, it was nicely done um, so enjoyable, not a lot to say really, um, we'll see how it compares to the, the uh, Amstrad coming up and of course the Spectrum and then of course stick around people because I will be giving you my verdict at the very end who wins this one? We'll soon find out. And now we come to the ZX Spectrum. Now obviously the first thing you'll notice, it looks very, very similar to the MSX, except you have sound. And it plays at a good speed, which makes the game playable. So credit straight away to the uh, the Spectrum. Now obviously the Spectrum is limited as we know with the monochrome graphics and stuff. But again, this was a really enjoyable game to play. And hey, that's what games are all about, isn't it? Making them enjoyable. So a really enjoyable one uh, to get around. Now I really like them overtaking noises you get on this one. You didn't get that on the Commodore. Um, so every time you pass the car, you get that zoom noise, which is pretty cool. Um, you didn't get that on the Commodore, which is a shame. But all in all, a very playable uh, conversion on the Spectrum. Very well done, Specky. Enjoyed this. Um, it's going to be a tough call this week, I think. And finally, we're taking a look at the uh, the Amstrad CPC version. Now, the first thing that struck me with this was the colours. I really like the use of colours on this. I thought they were really well done. Um, I've grown to quite like the uh, the Amstrad colour palette on certain games over the last few weeks, and uh, it's, it's slowly growing on me, this system. It's one I didn't love back in the day. I didn't really own one. Um, but it is a grower. Um, it plays well. 
plays very well like the other versions we've looked at today and the sound was good and it also featured that overtaking sound that I like so much on the specky version uh, as I said this version the spectrum version and the uh, the Commodore version were all very playable on the 8 bits shame about the MSX because it was his first out in but hey hang around let's go to my verdict shortly for the 16 bit and the 8 bit let's see who takes the win shall we I hope you enjoyed the look of that game. Arcade graphically, it looked really good. And I'd imagine that it, when you sort of crashed, the explosion coming towards you in 3D for its time would have looked very, very impressive. Now remember, if you have or had experience of this in 3D on the arcades, do let me know in the comments. I'm intrigued. I want to know more. Please do share your experience if you were lucky enough to have it. All right. Um, equally, we're going to look at the systems now. We're going to judge first the 16-bit systems. Now, as you saw there, the Commodore Amiga and the Atari ST looked very similar, as they often do. But this week's winner, it goes to the Atari ST. Now, the reason I gave it to the ST, it was slightly harder to play than the Amiga version. I thought the Amiga version was slightly easier, but it had a, a better frame rate, and I felt it just flowed better and moved better, and it graphically uh, gave a, a better impression with the movement for the race of the cars and stuff. So, it goes to the Atari ST. If you're a Commodore fanboy and the Amiga's let you down this week, let me know in the comments if I'm right or if I'm wrong, as always. Let's have a nice, healthy debate, and on to the 8-bit systems of the day. So who takes it? In fourth position, it goes to the new kid on the block, the MSX. What were they thinking with this? Blimey, how slow was that? I know it had the turbo boost, but hey, I'm judging it by the original release, all right? So MSX, this might be your first outing on my channel, but it ain't a good one. Let's hope you do better things in the future, eh? Uh, next up, in third position, I'll give it to... The ZX Spectrum. Very similar to the MSX, but the original normal version of it just played at the speed it should have done. So, uh, overall, not a bad game. Enjoyable. Uh, the sound was quite good. I enjoyed that overtaking sound, which was pretty good. Um, but overall, very, very good. So it's third to the Spectrum, which means in second position, which obviously gives away our first position and the winner of this week's comparison video, in second place, it goes to... The Commodore 64, which means this week's winner is the Amstrad CPC. Now, very enjoyable. Lovely, colourful, bright graphics on the Amstrad version. Really enjoyed it. Uh, the Commodore 64 version played nicely too, you know. I think as well, before we get into it all, honestly, all of these versions played really well. They were good, fun games to play, all of them. Except that MSX. But again, when you put the turbo mode on, it weren't so bad. So... All really enjoyable games to play. So there are no real losers this week, to be fair. You know, because whoever had this on whatever system, you won, really. But the Amstrad, for me, takes it because, like I say, the colours colour were lovely and bright. I enjoyed the sound. It kept that nice overtaking sound that I really liked from the Spectrum. And uh, overall, a very good, playable, lovely, colourful experience. Uh, Commodore 64, you're in second position. Um... Again, nice, not as bright graphically, wasn't as bright to look at, and um, the sound was good, but it didn't have that overtaking sound. There was something about it, zoom, zoom. it got me. I enjoyed that. Anyway, folks, that's my verdict this week. Now, if you agree, disagree, as always, let me know in the comments. And finally, a big thank you to you guys for subscribing, liking, commenting, doing that great stuff you do for me. I really do appreciate it. Stay tuned, and I'll see you all next time. I'm OG Duffy, and I'm out.